everyone. Nice to meet you in this format. My name is Hana. I'm a counselor at O'Melveny, and I'm excited to talk to you today about open source and open standard. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with the general concept of open source, given that Nextcloud operates under a license that's a type of open source. But to give you a recap, um, it's understood to be freely redistributed into to different uh, parties. And in doing so, there's no expectation of royalty payments or other fees. And with the understanding that the original source code would be included, and if there are any modifications or derived works from that, which is permitted, that it would be annotated as such. And um, there would be no discrimination as to who, what groups or what types of people would be um, eligible to receive it or would be entitled to it. And it's also meant to not be tied to any specific product or technology. And as you can see on this graph, there have been more litigation involving open source more recently. In terms of just the numbers, it has been that the numbers have been low generally. It's not a very, you know, con uh, litigious type of area compared to other types of technologies or other types of IP, but it has been increased in the last five years or so. Um, and in this chart, it displays sort of the different regions or the different areas or categories that have seen open source litigation um, being involved in. And that encompasses a pretty wide range, right? There's enterprise, there's online, there's also networking and communications, which has used to be a pretty small sliver, but has increased um, more recently as well. So now I'll switch gears a bit and talk a bit about open standards. And there are some similarities to open source, which I'll point out, but unlike open source, open standards are a little bit more tricky because it has been defined in many different ways by different organizations and different people. So it kind of depends on who you're talking to. But in general, similar to open source, it's developed under a process that's kept open. It also allows anybody to contribute and it's meant to provide something that's easy to access and easy to use and does not discriminate amongst different groups or different people who have access to it. And similar to open source, again, it does not come with a royalty expectation. But a difficulty with standards generally and also open standards is that there have been just so many of them and they have been proliferating somewhat, as you can see in this cartoon, um, just one after the other and has been difficult to see which one would need to be the main or standard or the main set of standards. So that leads to a lot of potential difficulties. It could be consumer confusion, which we've seen a lot in the field already, business fragmentation, as well as limitations to developers, right? So it's an ongoing issue and an ongoing concern. And as one example, specifically to IoT, there are many standards and protocols that are under development there as well. And this here is showing a, only a partial listing of IEEE um, IoT related standards. And I believe there are now more than 80 um, and counting that would be included in that list. So comparing open source to open standard or standard setting organizations, SSO generally, for open source, they tend to have a pretty short lead time. And it's kind of like this waterfall image here where there's this continuous contribution and regular updates. Whereas for standard, um, it's more of a longer lead time and part of it is because different companies or promoters have to come together and discuss and agree upon a standard and then they can disperse and go and implement them. And as such, the resulting process is somewhat of a sporadic or episodic starts and fits kind of a process. And if you look at the IP rights that are associated with open source and standards, for open source, um, the in the patent context, it would be from contributors, whereas for standards, it would be from working groups. For copyright, um, in the open source context, you're talking about open source licenses. For standards, on the other hand, in the copyright context, it would be documentation licenses or sometimes reference implementations. In the trade secret context, they're actually similar in that there are no viable trade secret protection since open source and open standards by their nature are going to be available openly. And there are some IoT standards and protocols that are being developed. As I mentioned, there's the IEEE ones. There's also AllJoin or Linux Foundation that have been um, getting some attention. And uh, just noting a few other IoT standards on the slide that are in various stages of development. 
And this is all made difficult because of the complexity of IoT, right? And there are many different um, primary capabilities and components. So I was hoping to give you some uh, five minute quick recap or overview of open source and open standard related issues. And I'm hoping that we can talk about them further because it's a fascinating topic. Thank you.